Hello everyone, welcome to our Bible study for this week. Sorry that we had some technical difficulties yesterday. Um, the, the file got mixed up when it was recording and it was unable to, we were unable to um, get the sound uh, and so, some of the picture, but uh, here we are a day later on Friday, looking forward to Latari Sunday. And that's one of the things that I really want to talk about, discuss, and impress upon you. That Latari Sunday is like a, like a jewel that's, that, that uh, shines brightly in rejoicing in the midst of the penitent season of Lent. So the setting of the ring would be uh, all would be the the Lenten services uh, all around, and then right in the setting would be uh, rejoice, O Jerusalem. And we'll get to that in just one second. But um, that is what Latari actually means. Latari means to rejoice, and that's why we move from violet pyramids to rose pyramids to really show that joy um, it's and, and even as the term suggests rose is a color and we understand rose by the flower and even in, in, in that flower there is uh, growth there is beauty there is uh, sensory perception as in smell seeing um, and, and, and the like. And so I mean, what do we do when we want to congratulate someone or rejoice with someone? We take roses and give it to them. You may see this in pageants or, or whatnot. <coughs> uh, also, Valentine's Day. Uh, in order to rejoice in your significant other, uh, all, most times all the flower shops will be stocked to the gills uh, with, <coughs> excuse me, with uh, roses of all colors. However, for us, rose is, I, I, I can't bring myself to say it, but I got to, pink. Rose is pink. So while roses can be red, as you may have heard, and violets are apparently blue, which, uh, well, I'm not going to get that. Um, at any rate, we celebrate with Rose, uh, and that's what we're looking forward to this Sunday, the Tari Sunday, rejoicing with Jerusalem, uh, the one in whom uh, Christ came and whom Christ died for all of us for the forgiveness of sins. Now, we've got a lot of stuff to put into this uh, half hour. So, first... Let's go through the readings. We're going to have an extra reading for today. Exodus 16, 2 through 21. And the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died at the hand of the Lord, in the land of Egypt, when we sat by with meat pots and ate bread to the full, for you have brought us out of the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread. One second. Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go and gather. Uh, a day's portion every day, that I may test them, whether they walk willingly in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepared what they were, uh, br what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all, all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling. 
against the Lord. For what are we that, we, that you grumble against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat, and meat to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling, that you grumble against Him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us, it is against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke, the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked towards, toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people, Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled to, with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp, and the whole morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather of it all, each of you, as much as you can eat. You shall take uh, an omer according to the number of the persons that, that each of you uh, has in his tent. And the people of Israel did so. They gathered some more and some less. But when, the measure, but when they measured it with an omer, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. Each of them gathered as much as they could eat. And Moses said to them, Let no one leave any of it over to the morning. But they did not listen to Moses and left some part of it till the morning. And when the bread, and, and, and it bred worms and stank, and Moses was angry with them. Morning by morning they gathered it, each as much as he could eat. But when the sun grew hot, it melted. This is our Old Testament lesson from Exodus 16. Our epistle le lesson for this the Latari Sunday. So those who received his word were baptized, and were and there were added that day about three thousand souls, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers, which is what we do in the divine service. This is this is instructed for us to do and commanded of us to do in the divine liturgy. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together, and had, do and had all things in common. And they were se selling their possessions and belongings, and di distributing the proceeds to all, as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Our gospel text is from St. John, the sixth chapter, the first verse. After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him, because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes, then he'd seeing a large crowd that was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we going to buy bread so that these people may eat? And he said this to test him, for he knew what, what he would do. And Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii would not buy enough bread for each of them to get just a little. One of his brothers, 
uh, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here with five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down, about 5,000 in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when, he, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. Again, you're hearing the language here. He gave thanks and then distributed. This is communion. Um, but this, is, this is communion before the uh, institution of, of communion. Um, he broke it gave thanks, and then distributed, and we are commanded to do so also. And when they, and when they had eaten their fill, he told the disciples, gather up the leftover fragments that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, This indeed is a prophet who came into the world, perceiving that then they were about to come to take him by force, to make him king. Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. This is the gospel of the Lord. Now. One of the things that I really want to uh, kind of focus on here in the, in the time uh, th that we have is the intro it, which is the part that we chant right after the, uh, there's the first hymn and then there's the confession of sins and absolution and then I turn around and I face the altar and then we chant together. Rejoice, O Jerusalem, and be glad in, and be glad for her, all you who love her. And then it goes back, back and forth. That's that's the the, the intro the, where where you sing, I sing, you sing, I sing, um, and it's from Psalm one twenty two, and really it's it's the entire part. The entire psalm, but there's one particular thing that that steps out uh, in our minds, sticks out. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast. I was glad when they said to me, "Let us go into the house of the Lord." How wonderful is that? And that's what Latari means. Rejoice, O Jerusalem. Rejoice. Let us rejoice. How, where should we rejoice? We should rejoice in the house of the Lord. How wonderful it is that we are able to come into our sanctuary and worship there. We should be glad to be entering into the house of the Lord, the temple of the Lord here at Augustana. And it should not be a burden. It should not be a um, uh, something that you just have to get through. It's not a so. It's not social networking. Uh, it's not uh, bu business net networking, which I have seen not here at, at this church, but I've seen um, uh, pretty wealthy businessmen uh, in an, another state who would enter in, into church to, for business contacts. Um, of course, that's, that's not an issue here. It's just an example. Um, we, but rather, we come into the house of the Lord with thanksgiving. And we should be running to the house of the Lord. We should be filling up the pews. We should be uh, uh, pre preaching the word of God. And there should be many, 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 many to hear it. And that's, uh, that's part of a pastor's job. But it's also a large part of our congregation's job because you know people, each one different from the other. 
and we can bring them in and of course like i said me too so that they can be happy in the temple of the lord so that they can come and join their voices with ours um, singing the, the liturgy and receiving the lord's supper um, and i know i've said this before uh, we need to be reaching out to people and bringing them in particularly in this time of covid um, those who are comf uh, comfortable with being in service, we should find them and bring them here because we have the Lord's Supper here. For those who are less comfortable um, and, and wear masks anytime they're in public, well, we have that too. 8.30 service is exactly that. So we can bring people to, uh, to that service if, if they are um, not as comfortable being in uh, around public with this sickness I, sh I should say and again 1030 if you are comfortable we humbly ask you to wear a mask uh, but in Christian freedom in and at 1030 service um, you have you have Christian freedom now with that being said as we come to rejoice and we bring our our uh, voices and our hearts and our love together uh, for our Lord in the temple. We definitely want uh, others to, to, to join in and to, uh, and to receive what the liturgy has to give. Um, and for those who are, who are, are listening, um, if you say, well, not me, that's, that's not me. It is you. You can do it. You can do it. Go invite one of your friends. Um, and I need to do this as well so that we can all again rejoice. Now the hymn for, to, for today is, remember we talked about that setting and Latari that is the diamond of the Lenten season because we get to rejoice. Uh, it's only proper that we have hymn 7 43 and I'll give you just if you have a hymnal I'll give you just a second to find that hymn 7:43 Jesus, priceless treasure. How perfect is, is that? The, the true, the true uh, jewel um, in, uh, that, that is placed in the setting of the cross and then placed in the setting of the empty tomb, the place of the setting when he uh, revealed himself to the apostles. Uh, the, the, the beautiful, beautiful uh, resurrection of that jewel. So, Jesus, priceless treasure. Uh, this is also a hymn of trust and comfort and hope. So I want you to listen to the words as they are trusting, um, they are hopeful, and they are uh, comfortable. So if you are having a, a hard time, a difficult time, uh, this is a wonderful hymn to sing. Jesus, priceless treasure. Fount of purest pleasure, truest friend to me. Ah, how long in anguish cannot reach me. Oh, sorry about that. Ah, how long in anguish shall my spirit languish, yearning, Lord, for thee. Thou art mine, O Lamb divine. I will suffer not to hide thee, not to as not I ask beside thee. In thine arms I rest me. Foes who would molest me cannot reach me here. Though the earth be shaking, every heart be quaking, Jesus calms my fear. Lightning flash and thunder crash, yet though I sin and hell prevail, assail me. Jesus will not fail me. 
Satan, I defy thee. Death, I now decry thee. Fear, I bid thee cease. World, thou shalt not harm me, nor thy threats alarm me, while I sing of peace. God's great power guards every hour, earth and all, earth and all, its depths adore Him, silence bows before Him. Hence all earthly treasure, Jesus is my pleasure, Jesus is my choice. Hence all empty glory, not to me thy story, told with tempting voice. Pain or loss, or shame or cross, shall not from my Savior move me, since he deigns to love me. Evil world, I leave thee. Thou canst not deceive me. Thine appeal is vain. Sin, thy once did blind me. Get thee far behind me. Come not forth again. Pass thy hour, O pride and power. Sinful life, they bond, their bonds I sever. Leave thee now forever. Hence all fear and sadness for the Lord of gladness, Jesus enters in. Those who love the Father, through the storm, though the storms may gather, still have peace within. Yea, whate'er I here must bear, thou art my purest pleasure. Jesus is Jesus' priceless treasure. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, our support and defense in every need, continue to preserve your church in safety, govern her by your goodness, and bless her with your peace. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.